Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jake and thank you for joining me again here on Exploit Academy. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform lateral movement inside of Active Directory environments. But before I get started, I want to give a big shout out to all the people who have been following me over the past few years and helping me grow my channel. Now look, I stay signed into this YouTube channel all the time, and I don't really contribute to it as much as I would like to, but I do see your guys' comments and the feedback has been very positive and is what is inspiring me to create more content. So if, if you find this video useful and this is something that you would benefit from, or even you just want to share your kind word or whatever you want to do, comment below, like these videos, and it really inspires me to keep making content because if it wasn't for you guys and the positive feedback I'm getting, I wouldn't be here today creating more content. So I really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And I, I don't know, I'm, I'm lost for words. I appreciate you guys very much. So with that being out of the way, let's get started. All right, so I drew up a quick sketch here to kind of give you a visual example of what we're doing here. So let's say this Kali box right here is us, right? And let's say we want to hack inside of some company. We'll call that company Exploit Academy, okay? So we're going to create a malicious payload. Let's say that payload is an Excel spreadsheet with some macros on it that create a reverse shell back to our Kali box. So here we are inside of our home. We're going to send that malicious email to exploitacademy.com headquarters, the Windows client, whoever that may be. It could be a sales rep, HR guy, whatever it may be, opens that file and that file runs and connects back to our Kali machine. So now we have successfully compromised the machine inside that network. Now that's great. But how do we move from this Windows client to a domain controller or a, another Windows client, for example? I mean, how do we just pivot around? Like, how do we get out of this shell that we are stuck in? Which is important because you don't want to be stuck in this Windows client, right? You don't want to sit here. You really want to get into the main controller. So how do we do that? I've already tried to tack in the main controller. It's locked down. All the services are up to date. Everything's patched. I can't get into it, which is what lateral movement is beneficial for. So let's say I have this Windows client compromised, right? What if I can just jump right into the main controller? I can just log right into it, right? I can just, I can view the files, I can upload to it, I can download from it. That is the beauty of lateral movement and that is what we're gonna look at. All right, so enough of the talking, let's get started. All right guys, so I'm inside of VMware. I have three tabs open. One is the Kali Linux machine, the second being the Windows 10 client and the third being the domain controller. Okay, so inside of Kali, I already have a connection to our Windows 10 machine right here. To verify, I do if I go to command prompt and type in who am I, you can see that this machine is john.do on the Exploit Academy domain. And you can see here I'm logged in as john.do on this shell. So now that we have access to one computer, how do we how do we pivot from this client to the domain controller? Well, to do that, I have a setup.exe backdoor I created right here using MSF Venom that I'm going to upload to the domain controller from the Windows 10 client. So you can imagine using the shell that we are basically doing the same thing as if we were sitting right here in our command prompt because we have a remote connection back, right? So everything I'm doing right here inside of Kali, you can imagine we're doing right here inside this client. It would work just the same. So Obviously, if I'm going to launch a uh, payload on the target machine, I already started a uh, a listener on Metasploit so I can catch that connection coming back. So you're going to have to have a listener ready, whether it's Netcat, whatever you want to use. Just make sure you have a listener to catch that payload coming back. So I got that right here. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is copy over our malicious payload. So to do that, I'm going to type in copy setup.exe into 192.168.232.134, which is the IP address of the domain controller, into the uh, C directory. I'm gonna type in yes. So right there I have one files copied into the domain controller's IP. 
So to verify that the file was actually copied, I'm going to remotely view it by typing dir slash slash 192.168.232.134. And we can see right here inside the domain controller, we have our setup.exe file. Now, how do we remotely launch the, uh, the payload? Right, that's the trick. And that's what we're going to use Wimic for. So I'm going to type in Wimic node or slash node colon and i'm going to type in the ip address of our target which is 192.168.232.134 process call create and i'm going to again call the uh, process to create a uh, process to launch which is our payload so i'm going to do 192.168.232.134 slash c slash setup.exe. So before I launch this command, let's go ahead and look at it. So I'm calling Wimic right here. I am targeting our domain controller. So this is the process to call. And then I'm giving the directory uh, to that file, that process, right? So we have our target and then we have the directory. So process call create is going to call a process or I'm sorry, it's going to create a process of the setup.exe file. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter and we should get a remote connection back on our domain controller. So watch this right here. We can see that it did uh, execute. And there we go. So we have a session open up on the domain controller. We can verify that by typing who am I? It should be John Doe right here on our Export Academy machine. But if I type in a uh, host name, we can see we are win P6 HD, which normally you would have a domain controller name, but I didn't change the name on a domain controller. <laughs> but I can verify that this is the uh, name of this computer if I go to configure this local server. We can see right here this computer name is win p6 hd dic whatever um, we can see that right here as well uh, right here so this we are inside the domain controller right we we successfully pivoted um and that's basically it guys you can follow the same process right you could use um uh, an HTTP server on the Kali box and just keep uploading this payload to each machine and transferring over, copying it over and whatever you want to do. But now that we have successfully uh, compromised this domain controller, we have full access to it. We can kill processes, kill services, whatever we want to do. It's completely ours, right? So that is how you do it. That is how you would pivot using Wimic. All right, guys, so that wraps everything up. So in short, to summarize the whole video, you want to copy over your payload to the remote target machine, and then you want to execute that payload using that Wimic command. It's super simple, and that is something you can do repeatedly over and over and over and over again throughout the network to keep pivoting. So if you found this video useful to you or something that you could benefit from, please like and subscribe to my channel. Comment down below. Show your feedback. I really appreciate you guys and all of your honest feedback and support that I've been getting from you throughout the years. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. That is a big deal to me. I never thought I'd see it. And I really appreciate every single one of you that have shown your support. So thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.